Hello, everyone, and welcome to the finale of Resident Evil 7. I'm pretty sure. Anyway, it's my first time through. I am in some sort of mining area. Uh, I had a, a serum to cure whatever afflicts this poor family. I used it on Mia, so Zoe is dead. Uh, I played as Mia on a ship. And I'm still Mia right now, I'm pretty sure, looking for Ethan. And it sounds like Stars is on the way. Hopefully audio balance is pretty good. I haven't changed anything, but others use this system as well. Which is why I started a little late, because for some reason, this monitor was unhooked. Mm. Giveaway. Let's get that going right now. Because this is your last chance, last chance, to get you some Scream Stream stickers and a magnet. Let's get that open. So yeah, as soon as I get it open, if you want in on this action, there's going to be two drawings today. We're going to start one at the beginning, one at about the midway point. Make sure you stick around for the drawing. All you're going to need to do, not until I say go, is exclamation point ticket space the number of tickets that you want to get the first ticket is absolutely free nothing uh, whatsoever entailed in getting the first one you still need to put exclamation point ticket in the chat though copy and start uh, but you can get up to 10 of them and additional ones cost blind wave bucks which you get by watching the stream by giving bits, and you get more if you subscribe. So there it goes. Exclam ticket. Space the number of tickets. First one's free. You need points for the rest. Last chance. And it's also your last chance to get this design on a t-shirt, because that is going away after today at blindwave.net slash shop. So, if you like that design, last chance to get it. It is Halloween, and I am playing Resident Evil. Seems like a fair fit. I think we're gonna beat this today. I don't think there's a lot left. We beat the father figure. I defeated him finally once and for all. I think that we beat the mother. Uh, she didn't have quite as dramatic an exit as the father did, so I'm not entirely sure as to whether or not she's gonna come back. Uh, I haven't beaten the brother yet, so he could be the last one. And also, Evelyn is just walking around being creepy. So there's that as well. Yes, happy Halloween, everyone. My favorite time of year this year, unfortunately, a lot different. No trick-or-treating for us this year. Social distancing and all. But once I get home from the stream, I'm going to have some Halloween action at home. And continue Halloween basically until tomorrow. And after the stream, if you want to get a little spook yourself, maybe head over to blindwave.net and participate in the hint hunt. Look for the door over on the website. And uh, what you'll find may terrify you for one reason or another. Are they watching us from the, that helicopter? All right, unfortunately, I don't think I have enough for the Magnum. This is, might be my last chance to buy it. You've taken me as things. Okay, so I am Ethan. I wasn't entirely sure. Oh, wait. Now I got a machine gun. All right, I got nine coins. That's one short, isn't it? No. It costs 10, doesn't it? Wait, it says nine. It says nine! Gimme, give gimme. Give oh, I'm gonna do this eight times. <laughs> like old school RPGs where you have to buy the items one at a time. Mm-hmm. Good. 
good. Tokens have unlimited ammo. <laughs> I did. I have picked up some ammo for it on my journeys. Yeah, yeah, one bullet. Perfect. That's all I need. All right. So I have a total of four bullets for it, and I'm not gonna need the psycho stimulus. I don't think. Honestly, I'm not even sure if I should take the handgun. When I love me the handgun in Resident Evil 4. The multitude of handguns in Resident Evil 4. I definitely might go to. But in this game doesn't seem quite as useful. What a, and I'm also confused as to why I have like a toy handgun. A, a toy axe and a straw. No. Um, mainly just a toy axe. I never did figure out what that was for. I definitely want the shot. Honestly, if I'm, like, at the end of it, maybe I don't even want the knife. That, definitely want that. Okay, uh, we got one chem fluid, so we can make another... We can make one of something. We can make uh, handgun ammo, we can make fuel for the flamethrower, we can make a med pack. How much room we got here? Yeah, we got a lot of those. Oh yeah, remote bombs too. Those were a lot of fun. Got some of that. More of this. Like this. All right, let's. We got more chem fluid too. It takes up an entire space. All right. Well, if we're not gonna bring the pistol, we don't need to make pistol ammo. So I'm thinking health. It's kind of what I'm thinking. One of these, and I can make two of those eventually. I can also make some flamethrower fuel. I don't have a lot of that, do I? Double check in here. Uh, I've got the solid fuel to make it with, but unless I'm crazy, which I might be, I don't. I'm gonna to need to carry this with me. Possibly. Alright, well, I don't need this. So let's get the solid fuel. And then let's make some flame terror. Oh, I see. I can make flame rounds for the grenade launcher, too. Halloween to you, MK. MK. Uh, do I make flamethrower fuel? How useful is a flamethrower gonna be? That's the question. Other than like the bees, why the bees? It hasn't seemed to be terribly useful. I mean, it was kind of useful against the mom. I feel like this might be better. The decisions. Do I definitely want to make more health? I feel like I definitely want to make more health. So let's make a small health and then let's make this and let's just forget the flames. Don't love it. Gotta be close. Right, so let's forget about that. And let's get uh, green herbs. Green herbs here. Uh, and then maybe I'll take the knife. Because it's a weapon slot and I can't put anything else there anyway. Alright, so let's make the grenades. And let's make one of these. We've got two slots left. I feel pretty good. Pretty good. Is there anything else we want to take with us, or do we want to leave some space for us to pick some stuff up? Probably the latter. 
probably uh, lockpicks. Oh, we have one more chem fluid too. We can make one other thing. Maybe we just save it until we know what we need. I guess. So you never know. I don't need the solid fuel anymore. So I got shotgun shells, I got the tissue sample, which I'm gonna carry, because that's like the big plot item that we got. So I figure that's going to be used somehow. All right, I feel okay about this setup here. So let's save it. And then let's see what it's got in store for us. <sighs> All right. Let's, uh, I guess we'll stick with this out for now. All right, so we got the ship, the swamp, the lab. So we're in the lab now? Because we were at the ship. Okay. I think we're ready. This the way. Where's the map? Uh, we should probably take the ladder down. Where's the ladder? can't remember if this is right or not. They both look plausible. Yeah, uh, Rob gave me this shirt. <laughs> no, 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 I definitely came in this way. Definitely came in that way. I'm remembering. Fuck my health. Dandy. Alright, out we go. Alright, Evelyn. It's time to take you down. Oh, Kim Fluid. Oh, man, they're loading us up. Ah. Uh, now I gotta make stuff. Let's go ahead and make a big health potion. You have two slots. I got Kim Fluid with nothing to use it on. Whatever, we can maybe come back. Maybe not. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, Halloween's been pretty good. It's mostly just been Hint Hunt this morning. Hi there. Let's put this thingy sneaking past you. Is there? Probably not. Let's get the remote bomb out. Yeah. Where are those puppies? Uh oh, he's coming. Excuse me. I want to like get them all after me together and then blow them up. Let's go all the way here. Maybe he'll reset. these guys to deal with, we'll keep the knife. Alright, we want to gather them up. We might need this machine gun in order to get their attention. Did they just like disappear? Do I have to fight them? Maybe I don't have to fight them. Don't get 
They can get mine out of. resources or not, but I don't think I could get the elevator door open with him around. Ah, maybe I could have. Oh well. Oh well. Up we go. Now this is, this feels like RE4, except we're going down instead of up. Yeah, we're not going to watch the new MHA movie until after the next season. If you're just joining us, make sure you get in for this giveaway for these stickers and magnets. Exclamation point ticket. Get in that drawing. Head over to blindwave.net slash shop for that shirt. Because it'll be gone after today. this way. That object popped in. Still can't shoot for shit. Oh, hi there. What's up? Goose. How do we redeem our blind wave bucks? Yeah, Scottish Michael's got your back. You can also do exclam, exclamation point ticket, and that'll redeem some as well to get you into this giveaway. All right, uh, where am I going? There's an elevator here, right? No, can I not get in this? Got the impression that this was like another elevator, but now that I look closer, maybe it's not. I say, all right, I think that's just a, nothing I can do. So instead, let's go this way. Mm, Descent won uh, the last movie poll. Getting some Descent vibes going on. A little, a little more well prepared than they were, though. All the guns are loaded. Appear to be. Oh, I hear something. Something worthy of this. Oh shit! I missed him! Oh, I would use the 
knife. Come on. I thought you were going to. So I got this one from a bomb. I've enjoyed losing my mind for three hours over doing the hint hunt. Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> but was it scary? make a big one as well. Uh, yep. Alright. I don't know where they came from. Thought I cleared out behind me pretty well. It's the Doom 3 theory of game design. Alright. Since, yeah. Okay. Alright, so I probably have to break that down with this. I guess. Let's check over here. Makes sense that there would be, like, explosives in this mine. Not so sure why they were on the ship. That's kind of makes sense. <gasps> one in there and come out and grab me as I was pushing it. It's daylight. We don't care about that. Not right now because there might be goodies. Disappointed. Turn your flashlight back on, Ethan. Let's get past if I have to go up there. I do have the knife. Uh, I wish I could just equip it here. That for now. So I'm not going to use the magnum to get the boss. lighting effect. Looks like there's a ghost up there. Behemoth is rough, but Bahamut is rougher. Ow. What happened? Did I run into an explosive? I know what happened. Damn you, Lucas. 
That's the brother's name, right? Hello, Andrew. Welcome. Get in on this drawing. Exclamation point ticket. To get stickers, possibly. Or a magnet. out. Get our gun out. All right, laptop might advance the plot. So let's move first. Steroids. Give those to Chris if we ever find them. Sent Friday, January 16, 2015, 1242 AM. Thanks to you guys, it's been about a week since my head's been clearing back to normal. And she still thinks she's got me. You guys really need to work on fixing that. Not only does she look like a little kid, but she's about as stupid as one, too. Mom and Dad are still totally under, though. I was wa wondering, and this whole family... Bah. My Mom and Dad are still totally under, though. I was wondering, is this whole family obsession something you guys programmed into her? It's kind of fucked up. That bitch, Mia, is still somewhere in between Evie La La Land and reality. She gets pretty violent, so I locked her up in a cell. Thought maybe Evelyn would get mad since Mia's her favorite and all, but she doesn't seem to care. She actually goes and visits her sometimes. She thinks Mia's her mommy. Like I said, your bioweapon is fucked up. Evelyn's family is a Evelyn's family obsession is getting out of hand. She's making everyone kidnap more and more assholes off the street to add to her freak show of a family. Maybe she's getting tired of Mia not coming around. It was a pain in the ass for me because I gotta clean up the mess whenever someone new comes along. This must be Lucas. By the way, Evie's looking sick or something. Her skin's getting all wrinkly and she's getting gray hairs. Is that supposed to happen? It's almost like she's getting old all of a sudden. Ah, is Grandma the first Evelyn? Aha. Uh -huh. I see. I see. They left her alive. I could be off base. That's kind of what it feels like. Infection report. Am I supposed to read this? Figure. Oh, there we go. The report details the symptoms that appear when the bacterium that grows inside the E series infects a human. Be sure to read this document thoroughly before dealing with E, e series weaponized assets. Hereafter referred to as mold. Initial infection. The mold ingests nutrients from the subject's body to propagate itself and slowly takes over cells within the body. As a side effect of this, the infected subject gains remarkable regenerative abilities. During experiments, we removed arms and legs from test subjects and found that they were able to coapt the amputated limbs in a manner of minutes. Mid-stage infection. Once the mold reaches the brain, the subject's thoughts become in tune with those of the E-series asset. The subject starts to hear things and experience hallucinations, and soon come under complete control of the E series asset. If the state continues, the host will lose all sense of ego. Complete infection. After every cell in the body has been taken over by the mold, the subject begins to lose their human form. Physical mutations differ from case to case, but all result in him or her acquiring incredible physical strength. Containing a subject at this stage would be extremely difficult. Mm, so that's all those things we've been fighting. Mold. Five minutes after dose, vomiting. Oh yeah, I see the vomit now. E, neurotoxin. E series doses tests. Ten minutes after dose, death. Ten minutes. Twelve minutes after death, cell calcification. I must have refined it, because Mia had it longer than that. Target acquired. Neurotoxin destroy cells of any subject based on E series bioweapon model. Use only for disposal of E series assets. So E for Evelyn. The toxin must be stimulated 
before use. All right, so we have to have a boss fight, we have to shoot him a bunch, then we have to do this by placing an e-sample, a sample of the e-series cells into the neurotoxin container. All right, got our ultimate weapon. The project was instigated in 2000 as one of several concepts for the company NextPass, Next Generation Experimental Battlefield Superiority Initiative. Working with technical assistance from HCF to develop a bioweapon for neutralizing combatants in mass with minimal direct contact, NextPass was later folded and all of its assets diverted to this project. What makes this project, mem yeah, what makes this project markedly different from conventional weapons is its ability to turn enemy combatants into allies converting hostile elements into willing servants. Since this effectively eliminates the cost of not only POW handling, but also combat itself, it's no wonder we had the, an even organizations chomping at the bit to get on board. So CIA, uh, I, I don't know what the others have to be. Project would have never existed if not for the discovery in blank of blank, the remarkably progressed Vicariant evolution fungus that we commonly term the mutam mutamycite mutamycite. The fabrication method for each bioweapon was to introduce the genome to a pre stage four human embryo and perform cultivation in a controlled environment for a period of 38 to 40 weeks. The resultant organisms were referred to as candidate specimens and graded upon usability from the impracticality and uh, faulty, so faculty. Series A through D to the perfected E series. A common appearance was selected for the bioweapons, that of a roughly 10 year old girl to ensure ease of blending in with urban slash refugee populations. The first ear series specimen named Evelyn, Evelyn has proven capable of secreting the genome from her tissue at will. It's also a note that Evelyn's genome imposes a profound control over body and mind when introduced into a host organism. Still have a lot to learn about the mechanism by which Evelyn achieves and maintains this control, but the working theory is that the vector is similar to the auto-inducer pheromones used for quorum sensing in Pseudomonas bacteria. Evelyn's control is exerted in a series of discrete stages, the first of which is hallucination. Almost immediately after infection, the subject begins to see images of Evelyn, though she is not in fact there, and hear her voice, which is inaudible to everyone else. Auditions with infected subjects throughout the stages of infection reveal that at first, the phantom Evelyn appears to be a normal young girl, sometimes desiring companionship or assistance. As time progresses, she begins making more and more extreme demands, including self-mutilation and attacks on other people. Psychological shock that induces helps to break down the mind's natural barriers to Evelyn's brainwashing effect, and by the time mental control is achieved, the infection has progressed throughout the body's cells, so the body lay. Check back. Okay. So, save room. Right, let's uh, manipulate the inventory and then save it up. steroids. Oh, I can just use those. Yeah, that's right. <clears throat> Muzcat, thank you for the subscription. You have a beautiful beard and personality. Thank you, Muzcat. I appreciate it. And if you haven't gotten in on the drawing for the giveaway, exclamation point ticket, space, number of tickets between 1 and 10. Get in on it. First one. 
everyone's got. And the rest was blown away bucks. Yes. Flame rounds, nice. So it seems like Lucas was working for whatever this organization is, Umbrella or something else. I think I'm good. The only thing I'm not so sure about is the lockpicks. I guess if I need the lockpicks, I can come back and get them. Save it up. Bojangles, thank you for the subscription. Stairs. Always put stuff under the stairs, no? Baby, load me up. It's boss time. Or bosses. <laughs> like I'm pretty sure we're gonna have to fight Evelyn. I'm not so sure about Lucas though. Gonna see how much time we have left after I beat this today. It's uh, I, I will probably play the DLC. If I don't get it done today, I might get into it next week. I hear her. This isn't the place I want to fight a boss. Move a little too slowly. A little too confined. Oh, it's like the descent all over again. Hey there. Die. I don't want to. Chasing me. Fuck! Lots. Block. No. Later. Uh, no. No later. Uh, maybe later.
behind me. They're everywhere! Mm -mm -mm. Alright. Spooky girl does have my daughter's name. It's spelled differently, though. Alright, well, uh, let's see. Shotgun to clear the way, I think. Fuck! I'm not too worried about picking stuff up, because... Oh, that's a dead end. Because ideally, if I'm running past them, I'm not using resources <laughs> that would otherwise stay and pick up. Kind of my working theory on everything. Oh, shotgun's so good. If I can actually aim it correctly. Nope. Uh, hi there. Can we pass you? Go in here real quick. There's like a ton of boxes. Get up. Go. Go, I said. Nope. Oh, They're behind me. They came from behind. Running isn't the best thing to do. Actually, I probably need to use the remote bombs a little more, maybe. Leave them behind me. That'd be a good plan. Fuck! Not done. Can't have one of those out and reload. That's a good thing to keep in mind. There's probably more behind me, right? See. Darn it. Darn it, darn it, darn it. Step step in. Thank you for the sub. Shotgun. Fuck! This up face. Keep running. Load. <laughs> Get him. Running. Shot in the face. Usually take more than one. And another. Load. Okay. Okay. We're good, I think. He's 
dead. Pink. You're the problem. And you're a big problem. Open again. What is that? Wait, why not? Why not? Far away. Let's not waste it. Another one down. Go around and pick that one up. Oh, he was fast. Grab it. Where's the other one? There it is. the grenade launcher. That is unfortunate. And I can't go back and get it. Oh well. Why didn't it blow up? Is it 
Molded. Ooh, attacks will make them vomit up acid, so if you're too close, you could be in for a deadly acid shower. Ah, you know what I'm really missing? It's a sniper rifle. Love me sniper rifles in RD4. Good. Not bad. What do you need to do with their grenade launcher? What can you do? That's how I killed the first one then. Expecting a boss fight. A boss fight for like. Ever since I got out of Lucas's escape room. I've been expecting one. It's gotta be coming up. Thank you, Phenom Taker, for the sub! 40 months! Swap out my guns, please. I need it. It's gonna be a real shame if I have to. Actually, I don't even know if I can get back. If I wanted to. Bummer if we have to go to the end game right now. There's the wheelchair. Grandma's up. We can finally shoot her like we've been trying to do the entire game. Maybe I should have equipped her toy pistol, given it to her as a present. It's 
some hallucinations. E001. Aha! Uh -huh. What a clever twist! from the other side. Oh, I just want to, I just want a stash box. That's all I want. I want to get my grenade launcher. Are we back in the house? Man, that was a hell of a detour. But that means that there is a, uh, box Is your fault. Why am I seeing this? Oh, there was no stash box in here before. I have a bad feeling about this. Cured her. This is all just a hallucination. Probably the case. Ground floor first. Like a hallucination. Okay. Just go up here or down there. This probably has like a I'm 
Oh, check downstairs. No. Oh, come on, Gray Fox. quietly into the night. This is gonna be a problem. She's become the fungus. Trust the fungus. <laughs> Hi. That's pretty great. after all. Is that it? Man, that's it. That's a pretty disappointing final boss.
umbrella load now. I'm Redfield. Chris! I'm glad we found you. Lost some weight, buddy. The fuck took you guys so long? Right? I have to be. Did I? Maybe they have the serum. They say that when one door closes, another opens. Well, a door closed tonight. And what a long night it was. But not just for me. Me and I weren't the only victims here. So were the Bakers. It was that thing, Evelyn, who made them that way. Umbrella. But now Evelyn's dead. So Chris these is guys working are here to clean up the mess. Umbrella? I had just come to terms with losing Mia. But now she's back and wants to start over. Put all this behind us. Good luck. Maybe this is where the next door opens. Alright, I guess that's the ending. Oh, wait. That would have been Eric's picture for his credits. They locked me up and took my soul. Sort of story. Uh, it's kind of the boys, kind of ish. All right, I think that's it. All right, well, I don't think I can give this one a recommendation, I'm afraid. Um, certainly my least favorite Resident Evil. I think if it didn't have the Resident Evil name, I would, um, 
feel kind of middle in the roady about it. Uh, but as a Resident Evil game, I did not play six. Uh, I gotta give it a thumbs down. Didn't uh, the ending did not save it for me? A very weak ending. That the last boss fight was like almost 100% scripted, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, considering that the other ones have at least been created somewhat. Never did get fight Lucas either. So he must be uh, in the DLC, or maybe we'll see him in 8 or something. No, I haven't played Resident Evil 6, so I can't, uh, I can't comment on that one. I heard that one was bad, which is why I never played it. Yeah, th uh, this game, it, it feels more like Obscure, uh, the PS2 game, in that it's like designers uh, and uh, Cold Fear. Like, um, designers wanted to make a Resident Evil game. And so they did, but it just doesn't, I don't know, it just doesn't feel all, like it's got obviously a lot of the elements of a Resident Evil game, but something about it just doesn't feel Resident Evil to me. It feels like a spinoff, or another studio like making their own version of that formula. Obviously it's putting it in first person, which is a different step, uh, one I don't particularly enjoy, at least not as the Resident Evil series as a whole. Like, if you want to make your own... If you want to make a different spinoff horror series that's first person, I think that's okay. But... I just... Never really enjoyed the gameplay tremendously. Uh, as compared to 4, especially. Like, uh, you know, uh, 1 and 2, I haven't played the remake of 2 yet. Uh, their gameplay, you know, it's, it's about the atmosphere and the horror. So, like, you can't really speak to those controls. Uh, but they're done that way for a reason. Whereas this, you know, it feels a lot like a shooter. Um, so, like, I'm not sure exactly what they're going for some of the time. Like, like the game tells you a lot that it's pointless to shoot the things. Um, like, the enemies themselves, well, especially the dad, is like, what are you doing? This is pointless. And then you get into situations where you're in a boss fight and you have to shoot them. So, I don't know, it feels... A lot of it feels uneven. I didn't really like the flashback stuff. It really took me out of the game. It just it makes no contextual sense as to why those things work the way that they do. I don't know if I'll stream two. I might just play it. Because I've already beaten the first one, so I don't know what kind of a stream that would be. Uh, I don't know, I'll probably look at the reviews for 8, and if it's more of the same, I honestly don't know if I'll play it. It just wasn't my cup of tea. Like, I think there's a lot of things that this does good. Um, I think the atmosphere and the sound design is pretty tremendous. Uh, I think... It could be very scary. Um, for me, like I get scared in games because I'm connected to the characters, usually, and I'm scared for that character. So I find third-person games more scary in that sense because I can see the thing coming to the character. I'm like, oh god, I gotta get that character out of here. Whereas this, like, I, I just don't get that feeling as much, usually. Um, and it gave me nothing to work with as far as like caring for Ethan. He's just, the, the, like, there's nothing to him. There's nothing to his character. It doesn't really give me anything to go on to. Like a, a James Sunderland. Or, I mean, Leon Kennedy, like, it doesn't give you a lot. But at least he's a badass in 4. And in 2, uh, he's, he's still kind of a badass. Not nearly as much as 4. Like, uh, there's definitely been first-person games that have freaked me out. Uh, Amnesia of the Dark Descent was uh, fairly freaky. Um, 
think some other ones. I didn't much care for Outlast. I didn't like Alien uh, Isolation. I liked Call of Cthulhu, but it didn't really scare me too much. I'm trying to think of other ones. Fatal Frame is in third person most of the time, but you go into first person to fight the ghost. I think that's tremendously effective. I haven't played Evil Within. Soma was really good. I did like Soma quite a bit. Evil within first person? Third person. Alright, we better do a drawing. Straw winner! Bex! Bex is the winner for stickers and a magnet. So make sure you whisper your uh, stuff to me. So I'm going to need a mailing address, an email address, at the very least, if you want to put your name in there for the shipping label, you can as well. But there's going to be one more draw, I'm going to start another one right now. Make sure you get in. This is your absolutely last chance to win. You need to do exclam, exclamation point, ticket, space, between 1 and 10. The first one is free. The rest of the tickets cost blind wave bucks, which you can get just by watching the streams. You can get them with bits, and you can get more by subscribing. Also, if you want this design on a t-shirt, you need to head over to blindwave.net slash shop, because today is going to be the last day that it is available. Let me look up how long the DLCs are. Uh, I don't know if I'll finish a DLC today, but I think I'm going to start it because I've got no other games planned until Cyberpunk comes out. So I think um, I'll maybe finish out the DLCs for this, and then I might play some Hades to make up the time because I haven't, um, I have it and I love it, but I've had no time to play it on my own. So I've only had like two runs, and I think that will be a lot of fun. Let's see, RE7 DLC. How long to beat? Looks like End of Zoe DLC is 90 minutes. And not a hero is also like 90 minutes. I don't know if there's any more. <clears throat> Guess we can do a little poll. which DLC we should do. I had four times three. It's probably about right. 43 restarts. Mr. Everywhere's destroyed. Uh, I missed a lot of them out early. Missed six coins. I missed eight files. Unlock difficulty Madhouse. Weapon Albert. Zero one R. Unlock item. The Secrets of Defense. Content, not a hero. That would be a Mormon. Uh, 
Uh, that looks like Chris. Right, let's look at our DLC. Uh, it's under more, right? Just all the footage from the first one. All right, so there's not a hero, which is a story. Right, so not a hero. End of Zoe. <laughs> okay, that sounds weird. Ultra high difficulty mini game. All right, so we won't do the mini game at least not right now. Band footage and Jack's fifty fifth B day. All right, vote it. I had to guess. I bet this is a lot of people's favorite Resident Evil game. But. I like the other ones better, I think. If I were to start with this game series, which one would you recommend I start with? You start with 4, or I've heard good things about Remake uh, 2. It just depends. Like, uh, if you want to go chron chronologically, I think the Resident Evil Remake 1 still holds up really well. Uh, but it's a much different game than... It's much less action. It's more survival horror. Uh, same with 2, at least the original. So they play a lot different. Uh, I think that they're quite scary, even today. I would skip three, if I if I had to choose, um, it's it's okay. I think um, like what should have been three, Code Veronica is much better. Code Veronica might be my favorite of the original style of them, uh, out of one, two, three, and Veronica. Four is probably my favorite game ever of all time. Uh, five is a lot of fun co-op, but it's very actiony, uh, not. So much horror. Uh, a very different game. Man, I remember when the first uh, remake came out of the first game on GameCube. It blew me away. And yeah, I skipped RE6. So. Alright, looks like Not a Hero is going to be the winner. So make sure that you get in on this giveaway! exclamation point ticket space the number of tickets between 1 and 10 so this is going to be your last chance to get them so get in on it All right, let me uh don't think there's anything on the playstation store that I shouldn't show but just in case
Actually, this is probably easier. Yeah, that's easier. Okay, we'll do that. We'll do it that way. Shouldn't be too much of a download. Yeah, I think there was some like creative stuff in some of the boss fights with this. Um, I don't feel like any of them were particularly fun to fight, except maybe the mob. But the mom is the most traditional of them. And I've certainly faced bosses like that in horror games before. Uh, that sort of like disappear and come out different places in like this one defined area. So I had fun fighting her. Um, I never had fun fighting the dad. My favorite horror movie is John Carpenter's The Thing. It's also my favorite movie. Or or not. How do I check the downloads? Do not often play on a PS4. Notifications? Should have downloaded this ahead of time. Kind of figured that they were on the disc. Or would have asked me. But I was mistaken. Now, Resident Evil 5 is a lot of fun with co op. Like, it's a very fun game. It's not a particularly good Resident Evil game, in my opinion, much like this. Uh, but Resident Evil 5, I think, is a very good co-op action game. One of the best. I have not seen The Wailing. Yeah, The Wailing. Never even heard of it. So I wonder, I don't need to listen to the PlayStation Mini music. Uh, so I'm trying to think of the story of the game. So it seemed like Umbrella or some other similar organization was creating a bioweapon, as is kind of Umbrella's thing uh, that they do. So they were trying to make like an 11. Actually, yeah, th uh, that's the other thing that I was thinking of is Eleven from Stranger Things. Uh, they tried to make this kid weapon. Weapon got out of control. Wanted a family. Like, I wonder... So it escaped from the ship. But how long ago was that? And why did it take them so long to track it down? Because it had to have been, like, years, right? Because... No, let me think. Because we, we read at the very end that it sounded like Lucas, the brother, was, like, cleaning up the messes of everything, and like Evelyn was bringing more and more people into the family, and if all those molds that we fought are people, that's a lot of people. So it seems like this was more of like a compound that they had her in for, I'm not really sure, like as an experiment or as like a cell to keep her in. I'm not really sure why she was in that house exactly. I figure it's just like place to contain her but if they want to use her in like military operations and stuff I guess maybe the the experiment wasn't done yet but like where does Zoe fit into all of that hmm is she the one that was supposed to like keep her under control
I did miss like eight journal entries. So maybe some of that was filled in in those. I mean, the Resident Evil games have never had very good stories. <laughs> um, they've usually been... Like, your objective is usually pretty simple. You know, very straightforward. Like, save the president's daughter, uh, escape from the mansion, and survive. Like pretty simple objectives but like there's a lot of convoluted plot about like you know science and experiments and like umbrella corporations and military tech and stuff like caked onto it it's usually pretty dense and impossible to follow is anyone in chat excited for the new netflix resident evil series that's coming out i've only seen degeneration of the animated movies. I think there was more than that, but I, I liked Degeneration from what I remember. It's been a long time since I've seen it. Hopefully that is good when it comes out. I think Dragon's Dogma came out already too, right? Which I haven't played that game, and I haven't watched the series either. Castlevania was good. I also heard that that same team is working on Devil May Cry as well, which I did like that anime back in the day, where he was obsessed with uh, Strawberry Sundays. Weird thing to add to the character, but kind of endearing. Does anyone watch Dragon's Dogma? Is it any good? Heard that team wants to do a Berserk anime? Oh God, don't tease me. I wonder if in my lifetime, well, one, if the Berserk manga will be finished, and two, if there will be a worth-watching anime series that spans the entirety of it. I watched the Netflix uh, Dragon's Quest movie, and it was pretty good. I was kind of in and out uh, watching it, like I was doing a lot of stuff that day, and Evie was mostly watching it, but I remember liking what I saw. Calvin and I are brothers-in-law. I am married to his sister. Mm -hmm. Sister. Uh... The question for most of what we watch is always maybe. I know Calvin and I have seen Community. And I liked Community quite a bit up until a point, and then I stopped watching. I can't remember which season it was, but there was a season. Hello, Adam. How are you? Uh, 13 Sentinels, Aegis Rim. I think so. Is that the, uh, the tactical game? Because I think I added that to my wish list. Because it looked really awesome. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm thinking of. No, I definitely want to pick that up at some point. That, it looks amazing. It looks like a combination between, like, a visual novel and a tactics RPG. Oh, man. Man, it looks good. Congrats for the Friday RPG. It was wild. Yeah, if you guys missed that, uh, hopefully it'll make its way on YouTube at some point. But the VOD from Friday is um, up. And yeah, it was an experience, let me tell you. I wasn't sure exactly how it was going to go. Uh, I, think, I think there's a lot to be improved with it, but I think the idea, the core idea is solid. Um, so I would like to try it again with a little more structured of a story and uh, giving chat a little more direction in like the suggestions and stuff, I think that could be a lot of fun. Yeah, the 1997 version of Berserk is worth watching, but it doesn't cover the entirety of, of the story. Um, like 
Like, I, I love everything about the 97 version. I love the dub. I love all the voice actors. I love um, the art style. How it has, like, it, um, I wouldn't say rely on, but it utilizes stills in an awesome way. And the music is some of my favorite music ever in anything. I don't think the movies are very good. It might exist someday. You never know. Hunter Hunter, like originally, its original anime run stop short, right? Although, I, I guess that manga's not done either, is it? Hmm. I did not read it first. I watched the 97 anime first, and then got hooked and started reading the manga. Why is this download taking so long? Should be on fiber. Make sure I'm on the wired connection. Yeah, even if that's plugged in, let me make sure it's using it. Yeah, uh, the Baylet theme, Guts theme, and Forces. Whew. Baby, that's some music. Um, I would, if, if you're going to experience Berserk and you're willing to read the manga, I would read the manga. I mean, it, it's, it's the best. <laughs> the best. Like, I love the 97 adaptation, but it doesn't compare to the manga. Like, it's my probably my favorite work of fiction. Uh, U connection status. Yeah, we're on the cable. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the animation in the movies. This is my biggest knock against it. Uh, the latest Berserk anime is awful. I, I couldn't make it past the first episode. Tell me why, tell me why, tell me why CGI. Indeed. <clears throat> yep, there's only one anime berserk, and that's 97. Although, I do need to try that uh, PS4 Band of the Hawk game. See if it's any good. <laughs> Clang. Yeah. Oh, boy. You're welcome to like the movies. You're welcome to like Resident Evil 7. It's just my opinion, man. Man, I'm 
I'm afraid that this is not going to get downloaded anytime soon, which is going to be unfortunate. I hate to call it this early, but I did not plan ahead. My mind was too much on the hint hunt, which you can go and engage in. I wonder if they've solved it yet. <laughs> uh, over at uh, blindwave.net, you find the door and then go over to discord.gg slash blindwave and work along with everyone. I don't have Hades with me though, is the thing. It's on my Switch at home. And I would have to download it onto this one. How are you able to come up with interesting puzzle but at the same time being super hard to solve? Uh, for like the hen hunt? So, it's... It, it's a challenge because I don't know like if you're making a puzzle game like a video game right um, I guess there's the internet but like in theory you have like one person playing that and solving those puzzles kind of on their own and then if they want to cheat they can go online and, you know look up the solutions or stuff but with these like because everyone is working together you have to outthink all of those people who are working together. So you're fighting against like a collective intelligence. But the thing I want to happen the least, like if, if people solved it immediately, that's a better solution than people feeling that the solution was unfair. So that's like what I want to avoid at all costs. I don't want people to feel like, like there just wasn't any way to solve it or... Uh, that the steps to the solution weren't valid or something like that. So, and a few hands passed, I've like been able to artificially extend the amount of time it takes to save it because there's like multiple clues that can be dispersed over a period of time. Uh, I don't, I can't decide if I like those or not. Like I, I like them and that it like, continuously gives like a, a surge of adrenaline into the people trying to solve it of like having the next one uh, but I don't like it in that uh, for like the one we did was it the last one or the one before where it was like the scavenger hunt where you posted stuff on Twitter like um, you just you could have solved it um, you know 75% of the way through maybe but like not after the first one. You just have no idea. So I'm hoping this one keeps you guys busy for at least a day. Maybe a few days. We'll see. But yeah, I um because I had a plan for the hint for uh, this time. And I had already started working on it. I was about like 25% of the way through, I would say. And then I had this idea uh, for the hunt. I was like, oh man, that's a pretty good idea. And it's perfect for Halloween. I was like, but this is a much bigger scope than the one that I had planned. And I was already going to cut it kind of close with that idea. So I already lost time and the scope was bigger. So I've spent way too many hours over the last week trying to uh, get, that, get that running. Did you ever find the Haunted History book on the Wave Cave? Yes, actually. I think I have it right here on my phone. called Haunted Marietta. I can read the part for this building that I'm in right now. Uh, let's find it. 
this is the one, right? Yeah, okay. All right, so this building uh, has housed dozens of establishments in its 100 plus year history, including a cigar factory, a hardware store, retail shops, offices, and apartments. The dish ran away with the spoon which appears above the arched entrance, was the name of one of the many gift shops that have come and gone. The building's most notorious owner and occupant was a man named Pete, who ran a popular restaurant and lounge on the premises in the 1950s. Each evening, as the dinner rush ended, Pete retreated to his office on the third floor. After a few drinks, he climbed the narrow spiral staircase, still there, to the small penthouse on top of the building opened the door, and stepped out onto his favorite place, the roof. He loved to sit on the front edge of the building, his legs dangling above the tops of the third floor windows, and drink the night away. Pete was an independent sort of character and sometimes left town for a few days without telling anyone where he was going. But when he had been gone a week, he had missed the annual 4th of July blowout at his restaurant, his wife got worried and called the police. Officers found his corpse sprawled on the roof in a sea of empty liquor bottles. Luckily for Front Street pedestrians, Pete had fallen backwards rather than over the edge of the building when he lost consciousness. About two weeks after he was laid to rest, strange things began happening in his building. Strange things that continue to this day. The ground floor is a gift shop and framing gallery. Small items are constantly moved around, and the staff finds framed prints that were hanging securely when they left home, lying face down on the floor in the morning. So uh, the bottom floor used to be a framing gallery a few years back. Books refused to stay shelved on a small bookcase in the back of the room. The bookcase is level. The owners checked that. They also moved it to a couple of different locations to see if that would help. It didn't. It's as if someone passes through the shop in the middle of the night rearranges the knickknacks, takes down the pictures, and knocks the books off from the shelves. Whoever or whatever is causing these disruptions also seems to have an issue with timepieces. The owners have stopped trying to keep clocks in the shop synchronized. The second and third floors are condos. The spiral staircase still leads from the third floor unit to the roof. A few years ago, a woman living on the third floor saw a man in an old-fashioned suit on the spiral staircase several times. Apparently, dogs and cats can see them, too. Animals do not like living in the condos. They're nervous, can't relax, and have a hard time sleeping. And even though the entire building was recently rewired, lights flicker and ceiling fans turn themselves off and on. The oddest anomaly, however, has to do with the door in the penthouse, the one that opens onto the roof. No matter how often it's closed, every time anyone goes to check, the door is standing open. The building's exterior still bears faded and peeling fragments of advertising from Pete's day. Talk about us, the back wall of the penthouse whispers. Don't worry, Pete. We are. So that's this building. Now, I've never seen the top door open. Because um, it just goes right onto the roof. So, like, like birds and bats and weather stuff would get in. The only thing that scares me about this place is the sudden link internet connection. <laughs> Are any of us truly alone? I'm alone in the building right now, as far as I know. But you never know. There can always be someone lurking around. It could be where the bats come from. That's true. We certainly have had a problem with those recently. Though we haven't seen him again for a little while. And we haven't seen him since we talked about it the last time on the podcast. So it's been, uh, I think, like the entire month of October, maybe? I don't know. I have zero conception of time. Especially as I get older. Like, I just have no idea. I. I was trying to think of how long I've been in Blind Wave. Like, we were uh, talking 
before a reaction. And I was like, man, I can't remember how long I've been on blind wing. And Eric's like, well, how many uh, mailbag Christmases have you been in? I was like, oh, that's a good way of counting it. And like, we all were trying to count how many we had. And like, <laughs> we had trouble remembering how many we had upstairs versus down here. And still not sure. I feel like it's been three years that I've been some part of Blind Wing. I do. I get lost in time and space. I've never even seen the second bat, if it is a second one. I saw the first one from, like, last year. I know. I saw that Sean Connery passed away. Very sad. He's, um, it's one of my favorite movies ever. I love him in James Bond. I love him in The Rock. Uh, Dragonheart is probably my favorite movie of his. <laughs> uh, I even like The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. No, I don't hear the bat. Yeah, Leave Extraordinary Gentleman was his last movie, right? What am I playing now? Well, I was going to wait for this Not a Hero DLC to download, but it says it's got 33 minutes left. And 33 minutes left, I wouldn't have much time to play it. So I think, unfortunately, I might have to call it today. Um, I will probably get into the DLC next week for it. I can probably blow out two of them. It sounds like the Mia one and the Not a Hero one are the best ones. So I'll do a little research into them, talk to Aaron, see what he thought of them. I uh, might play those next week. If not, I'll probably pick up Hades. Because love me some Hades. Now that I'm not working on the hint, maybe I'll have some time to play it. Favorite Halloween candy? Ooh, that's a good one. I mean, as far as just, like, candy goes, I'm a big fan of caramel. So I like, like, Wade's Originals. I like uh, 100 Gram Bars, Rolos, Carmelos. Those are all super top tier for me. Um, if I just see those like candy and not, like, Halloween candy. Like, when I think Halloween candy, I think, like, candy corn like stuff that you don't get any other time of the year. What other? Uh, like saltwater taffy, I don't really get any other time of the year. I really like, um, I always like the vanilla Tootsie Rolls. Those were some of my favorite things that I got from Halloween candies. Yeah, the blue ones. The blue ones are the best. I've not played World of Final Fantasy. Is that a mobile game? Actually, something I want to know. I never played uh, Crystal Chronicles back in the day. And I saw that uh, Crystal Chronicles remake is on Switch and that it's co-op. Do you guys think that would be a good game to play with Evie, my seven-year-old daughter? If anyone's played it. Because I might pick that up. Because we, uh, let's see, we are right at the end of Cat's Quest 2, which is that action RPG that we're playing through. Uh, the game is Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles, the like remake or whatever, uh, particularly the one that came out on the Switch. I don't know if it came out on other platforms or not. So I'm looking for a new co-op game to play with her. We're also playing through Trine as well, the three of us. I haven't played Final Fantasy XV yet. I own it, uh, but I'm making my way through uh, one JRPG at a time. And I finished Three Houses not too long ago. I haven't picked another one up yet. I might play Tales of Vesperia next. Sonic the Mania? Uh, her and I do play that together, but I don't really count that as a co-op game. I mean, like Tails, like he can help with bosses and stuff, but he doesn't really do anything else, really. 
Also, man, that game is tough. <laughs> you must go deeper. Yeah, she can probably handle that one. Oh yeah, no, I mean JRPGs might be my favorite genre of games. Uh, it certainly, at one point in my life, had been. Now, uh, I don't know. Like, I just like games. Like, I have least favorite genres. I don't like racing games, particularly racing sims. Um, I don't like, what are they called? Like, survival games. Like, um, I don't like Minecraft. I don't like um, Subnautica. Like, those style games. Uh, I haven't tried Portal 2 because she doesn't have a lot of... Uh, I've been trying to get her to use like the keyboard and mouse a little more, but uh, she has almost zero famili familiarity playing games like that. She's really only done like touchscreen stuff and controllers. So I feel like Portal might be asking a little much to start with. I, I don't like Terraria. No, I, and um, not that those are bad games, I just don't like those style of games. Uh, I like games that have, like, endings, mostly. And, like, very defined goals most of the time. Swords of Ditto. I think I've heard of that, actually. That, that might be on my list. I'm going to write it down. Yeah, we have played through several of the Lego games. Uh, which are games I wouldn't play on my own, but are fun to play with her. The new Star Wars one looks pretty good, though. Swords of Ditto. Yeah, we played through Kirby. Um, what, what was it for the Switch? Oh, there's so many Kirby games. I can't remember. It's for the Switch, where you have like four people on the team. Uh, she loves Minecraft. Uh, I actually got it for her on the Switch. But she could probably play that on PC as well. Was it Kirby Superstar? I can't remember. I need to look it up. It's going to bother me. Kirby Switch. We played through... Kirby Star Allies, I think, is the one that we played through together. Have you ever played a Metroidvania? We tried to play um, Guacamelee, but that was a couple years ago, and she was a little uh, too young to grok those controls. The co-op Lord Croft game might be fun. I, I played it. Um, I played it with Maggie and with Calvin, both of them, I think. <laughs> Metal Gear Solid. Yeah, I was a little older than her when I played it, but not that much older. Now that I think about it, it's growing up fast. It's crazy. Uh, we played Ultimate Alliance Three co-op. We also played um, uh, the Lego Marvel game as well. She might like the Scribblenauts games. Uh, she's just like learning reading. So games that um, don't have voice acting can be a little challenging. She did play through um, Rayman Legends with me. Now she was, like there was a fair amount of times where she's a bubble <laughs> uh, because she's died, but we did play through the entirety of that together. Actually, we're playing through a lot of the levels now again. She was in the mood to play it again. Uh, we played, um, her favorite game I think is Mario Odyssey, Super Mario Odyssey. We've beaten that like 26 times. I'm usually Mario, but she's been Mario through a couple of those. Ratchet and Clank's not co-op, but it's great. 
Uh, I beat Shadow of the Colossus for them. So like, um, uh, like, like some of our family nights sometimes is like me playing a game that I think is truly incredible. It should be experienced even if just by watching. So like, I'll go back and I'll play like Shadow of the Colossus, and like that was our evening for a few days. Yeah, man, Shadow of the Colossus, so good. One of the best ever. Jack and Dexter 1. Yeah. I think she can handle Jack and Dexter 1. The remake is really good. Of Shadow of the Colossus. Absolutely. I'm, um... I'm going through it again and again in order to get up to the secret area. Yeah, she's got amazing taste. Evie does in games, in movies and TV shows so far. Oh, Untitled Goose Game has a co-op? That's pretty cool. Because I was going to get that for her at some point and have her play through it. But if that's co-op, that's even more fun. I just need to get her into civilization. That's, that's what I'll know. She's a good taste in board games, too. If I had to guess, I would say her favorite is Ghost Blitz, which is, um, it's a good game for all ages, but especially good for kids. It's a reaction game, kind of like, um, you know, you can think of it kind of like Slapjack, but uh, you have to flip a card over, and you have to pick an item on the table that is exactly what's on that card. So, like, if a white ghost is on that card, you pick up the white ghost. Or if there isn't something that is exactly on that card, like a blue ghost, for example, on a uh, green chair, you have to pick up the thing that matches nothing on the card. So not the item or the color. So that's a lot of fun. Does she read Choose Your Own Adventure books? Uh, actually, one of the games that uh, game series that we've been playing through is the Phoenix Wright series together. So like she'll control that, and I'll help her read through it. Um, we just finished Apollo Justice, so we did the trilogy, did Miles Edwards Investigations, and we did Apollo Justice. So I'm going to move on to uh, whatever the fourth one is. I have one Choose Your Own Adventure book. Um, uh, an old Transformers book from when I was a kid. It's the only Choose Your Own Adventure book that we own, but... Phoenix Wright's kind of like a Choose Your Adventure book. England's announced a second lockdown. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Stay safe. I'm worried about, um, because Sumo starts tomorrow, I think? And, um, they're going to be doubling the crowd capacity in the arenas. So, um, I'm hopeful that nothing happens. And that um, none of the wrestlers get sick. Or the audience. I mean, anyone. But I'd hate for Sumo to get shut down again. How did I get into Sumo? That is a good question. How did I get into Sumo? I think I just came across like a Sumo video on YouTube. And I've, I've always been kind of interested in Sumo. Uh, I always liked the filler arc. Uh, or the episode that deals with the sumo wrestlers in Ronnie Kenshin. And, like, I've always been fascinated with Japanese culture as a whole and with sumo wrestling. Um, I mean, wrestling in general. But I think I watched something on YouTube and was like, man, it seems like it'd be a lot of fun. And then yeah, I just started watching it. Uh, you can watch it on the NHK World app. Uh, it's on the phone. Uh, you can go to their website and watch it too. It's it's free uh, to watch the stuff. Um, but the VODs are only around for like the last tournament. So if you want to go back further than that, I'm not really sure how. I think uh, th there is a Sumo app where you can go back further than that, I think. But it's all in Japanese. So 
I have a tough time navigating it. I was never into MH, MMA or boxing. I've never really given either of them a, a fair shake, I would say. Like, I've never really tried to watch them. Um, but I love sumo because, like, on the NHK app are the sumo highlights. So it's just, like, match to match to match to match. And they last from, like, you know, seven seconds to a minute at some of the longer ones. So, like, you get a lot in a short amount of time. It's why I got out of, like, watching football and baseball and things because, like, you have to spend three hours watching those things, especially with all the commercials. And um, just didn't have that kind of time. So love me some – love me sumo. Recommend checking it out. Hakuho is my favorite uh, and Inho. Hakuho is probably the greatest sumo wrestler who has ever lived. Uh, he's got all the titles for, like, most winningest and all that kind of stuff. He's so good, and he's so, he's so, like, cocky as well. Like, like, sumo's great, too, because it's, like, there's a lot of respect in it, and, like, you know, they don't celebrate after they win because that disrespects your opponents and stuff like that. And there's a lot of, like, the history and the heritage and stuff that I really get into, but he'll just slap a motherfucker, let me tell you. Um, I don't think I finished Yu Hakusho. I was actually going to start it over again with Evie. I think she can handle it. She can handle One Piece. So I think she can handle Yu Hakusho. So I was going to start from the beginning and watch it with her. One Piece, uh, I am in the... I can't remember the name of the base, but they're in like a marine base right now. Um, it's technically a filler arc, I think. G8 or something like that. But uh, I, from everything I read online, it said to watch it, so I'm watching it. I wonder if Rikishi, so yeah, um, I assume you mean the wrestler, started in sumo first. So yeah, I think it's pronounced Rikishi, but at WWE, F and E always pronounced it Rikishi. Um, he did not do any sumo, although there was a professional wrestler that was a sumo at one time, John Tenta. Uh, he was the shark in WCW, and he was either Typhoon or Earthquake. I think he was Earthquake, but his real name is John Tenta. So he actually, yeah, was a sumo wrestler. Yokozuna was not a sumo wrestler, no. I mean, his gimmick was that he was a sumo wrestler, but he did not compete. In sumo and certainly not in like grand sumo all right I think I'm gonna call it let's draw this last winner the last one the last so make sure, if you haven't got in already, exclamation point ticket, number, a space, a number between 1 and 10. In order to get in on that, your first one is going to be absolutely free. The rest of them take blind wave bucks. So make sure that you get those because this is your last chance. And if you like the design, you want it on a shirt, blindwave.net slash shop. This is your last day to get one. I've not watched the documentary about Taker the Last Ride. I would love to watch it, uh, but I am I've been boycotting WWE stuff for a while. So I refuse on principle. Yeah, if you're looking for a good horror game, super recommend The Missing, J.J. McField in the Island of Memories. Uh, it was on sale on the Switch. I don't know if it still is. Damn. Damn, it's good. <clears throat> All right.
right, let's draw it. Here we go. Congratulations, Jimmy Flamingo, for the win. Make sure you whisper me your mailing address, your email address, and your name if you want that on the mailing label. So congratulations. Can I use bucks to buy a hint? I'm afraid not. I gave the hunt out for free to everyone. So yeah, I might recommend uh, if you want to know what's going to replace Fate Zero, uh, heading over to discord.gg slash blindwave and participating in the hint hunt over there. All of your minds combined will prevail, I have no doubt. How long until it comes in the mail? Uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> Depends where you live. If, you're, if, you're, if you are in the US, it would be less than a week. Um, but if you're international, then I cannot say for sure. But we will ship it internationally. Is he here? Jimmy, yes. Jimmy is here. Awesome. I'm going to make sure that I've got your whisper before we shut this puppy down. also need to make sure I don't have any push-ups or anything. Uh, redemptions. I do. I got a couple. All right, so we'll have to do those two. Uh, but let's check for my whispers. Not yet. Make sure you get that to me. Why well, do these exercises? What do I got? I got push ups. Push ups, so 20 push ups, 10 sit ups, and 10 squats. For Rick, for Pong, uh, Rick, 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 these are for the hint hunt. Indeed. I expected no less. Uh, Aaron's gonna be back Monday. I think he's coming back with Warcraft 3, I believe. So be sure to come back for that. 